Welcome to the Breakthrough Podcast with your host, Reba Hobbs, a podcast motivated to help survivors of trauma to heal and focus on their full potential. Hey guys, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Breakthrough Podcast. I am your host, Reba Hobbs. I am coming to you after a month of being off. And we're basically coming to you after a month of being off because I had to take some time off for my kids, um, getting prepared for them to go back to school. Also, I took some time off for my mental health with some things that I'm currently going through right now that you guys will know about later on in future podcasts. And also, I took some time off for my business because we are rebranding. We're just not coaching about healing from domestic violence, but we're also coaching about healing from past trauma. So on today's episode, we have a special guest today. It's personally my personal favorite guest because it's my baby. He's not a baby anymore. He's 14. This is his first time being on the podcast so I think he's a little nervous, but that's fine because I'm always nervous when I do every podcast. Um, but I'm glad that he agreed to do this because, of course, he's like, uh, Mama, I don't want to do this. But, of course, he agreed to doing it, and I appreciate that. And we just want to, um, last podcast I wanted to talk about because I talk a lot about helping children, teenagers, teens to become better than what we were as an adult. So a lot of times when you listen to my podcast, if you have listened to my episodes, I talk about a lot of what I coach about. I uh, coach a lot of adults um, to help them heal from trauma that they had in their past. So why not, while I'm coaching adults, talk about how to help the teenagers, kids, young adults, not do the things that we did when we were younger. So that's where we at. And so that's why I wanted to have him on the podcast just for you to get to know him. And cause I talk about him a lot, but just so you can get to know him and then you get to know what it is to be a child or a teenager of a mother that is a coach. But at the same time, I'm not perfect in my parenting. And so I don't expect anybody else to be perfect. And to just get um, advice or get your uh, a teenager's opinion on where their mindset is at. With everything that's going on, we've just been through a whole pandemic, um, COVID, them being out of school for pretty much a year and a half, and them going back to school. He is going into high school um, this year. He's going into a military high school, so we're excited about that. I know he's a little nervous about that, but... Who, who's not going into high school. Um, it's a new journey. It's a new destination. So we're just here to encourage him, help him, but we're just excited to have him on the podcast today. So we'll just jump right in. So tell us your name and I already told him your age. Um, you could just tell us something about you that you would like us to know. My name is Corey and Okay. Okay. Um, it's cool. Um, of course, like I told you, he's nervous, but we'll just start from here. Why did you choose to go to IT? That's his name of his school. It's um called Indian Trail, but it's a military academy. A part of the the high school is just not a military academy itself. It's four sectors. But why did you go, choose to go to IT? I went to IT because um I didn't. I didn't want to go to the same same school as my other as other friends were because um my other friends are going to a a particular school that's like right right by my old school that everybody's going to so I didn't want to go go to that and like meet the same people uh anymore so I just went to a different school to um clear clear my mind I like that. I like that answer. See, guys, I didn't even, I didn't even know that, but I like that because it pretty much is saying that he wanted a different surrounding. Um, yeah, it's great to have the friends that you have, but to open yourself up to new experiences, to new um, 
adventures, everything. I know that you're personally probably nervous about school or whatever, um, which is normal. Very, very normal because you're starting something new. Um, but tell me some things that you're looking forward to at your curricular activities or uh, what are you expecting from this first year in high school? What I'm expecting from this first year in high school is um, that I will try I'll try to enlist for basketball if I can. I'm I'm already in the in the school band, so that could work. And um, I hope I do do good in the uh, in the KMA, the military academy, which which the uh, academy that I'm listening for right now um so yeah so while you are in high school is there any i must say any new relationships i know you wanted new friends but is there any new relationships that you're looking forward to um while you're in there are you looking forward to any kind of per uh personal subjects um, like, are you doing, I know you said military, you're doing the Air Military Corps, but you're doing basketball and you're doing band. Um, are you looking forward to anything outside of that? Or those are the only two things you're just going to focus on for right now? I'm, I'm not really focused on, I'm just got kind of trying to be careful on like how, what, where friends I choose from because because now it's a struggle, and um, I'm I'm not I'm not really expecting uh, I'm not really expecting anything special from any new relationships. I, but I hope it goes well. I'm sure it will. Um, we want to. I just wanted to point out what what you were saying about new friendships. Pretty much when you go into something new. Like you said, you're not expecting, but I want you to understand that you should expect something, expect some kind of, uh, just like when you get in a relationship, if, once you start dating and everything else, um, uh, guys, please, uh, pray for me with his dating. If he start dating, Lord Jesus. But anyway, uh, when you go into a relationship, you should expect what you want to acquire from someone meaning what kind of friendship you want them to have what kind of fr uh, friend you want them to be to you do you want them to be honest trustworthy uh you want them to have an integrity do you want them to we're just gonna get real smoke weed do you want them to be taking drugs do you want friends like that i'm not asking you these things but i want you to say i want you to think about what to expect from certain friends that you won't surround yourself um, with the wrong people that you will know that, okay, the kind of person that I represent is the kind of person that kind of I'm going to be around. But that's not necessarily always nine times out of ten, you're going to have a lot of similarities. You're going to have a lot of differences too, where you're going to have friendships that do different things, but you might be close with them on one on, on a different aspect and a different level. They might say, take drugs, smoke weed do alcohol whatever but they might be a good friend to someone that don't do the all the substances so i don't want you to be um judgmental and say because they do these things that you can't be a friend with them i want you to look at their character i want you to look how they represent themselves i want you to look at yes uh because i don't teach you to drink alcohol and smoke weed and take drugs but i also know the reality of, of I personally, as an adult, have friends that do that, that I don't do it. So, but that don't mean that they're not friends. You get what I'm saying? I don't want you judging them. That's what they do on their personal time. But if it comes to a per point where it's interfering with your relationship with them and they're doing it and they're trying to peer pressure you to do it because that's a lot of things that happen. Like, why you don't do it? It ain't nothing. It's just going, you know, it, it's a good drug. It, the, all the arguments and everything that everybody have and it ain't going to do nothing to you. It's natural. And, uh, it, I don't do it all the time. I just do it when I'm stressed. And 
all the those things that you'll hear someone say. I don't want you saying, oh, I can't be their friend because they do it. I want you to make that decision and that, that judgment. You don't want to be their friend because they're peer pressuring you to do it. Whatever they do on their personal time, that's fine. If they want to do that, that's what they do. If that's not what you want to do, then I want you to make the judgment of having integrity, having a good character, and knowing what you want to do. Have an opinion of your own and not be afraid and to speak up to say what you do and don't do. Um, I tell my son a lot of honesty about what happened to me when I was a teenager, about things that was happening around friends. I had a lot of friends that did a lot of stuff, and I'm talking about a lot of stuff, that I did not do personally um because of how I was raised and that didn't stop me from being that friends they just knew they had to respect me to know okay we don't do that they didn't change our friendship they didn't make us not be friends they just respected it you don't want to have a friendship with someone don't respect your opinion you don't want to have a friendship where you can't speak your mind and you feel like you're pressured in doing something because they doing it or you might get talked about or whatever else. Um, a lot of teenagers, a lot of teenagers do stuff have 80% of the time because their friends are doing it. Not because they really want to do it. Because it's the thing to do. Uh, so I'm glad that you see it in the beginning. You, you know, you don't want, don't go in there expecting nothing that's good too. But at the same time, just expect to have, the same respect you want to give somebody, you do it to yourself. It's a perfect example. Somebody's talking about a friend and you going in there with a best friend. So if somebody's talking about a friend, you stay out of it, you stay out of the way of it. Um, you just walk away from it. If you notice, sometimes you got to have intuition to know somebody's character. And I think you have a lot of intuition to know good and bad characters. But also, I also teach you too, to have good character too. Not to join in when someone else is doing something that you wouldn't want to get done to you. Uh, because we talk a lot about bullying. Um, and I talked about bullying with you guys on other podcasts about kids being bullied. Bullying right now is like the number one thing, whether it's social media, in school. And it's not like when we was growing up technically bullying with the punching and hitting and kicking is more of a verbal and we know that verbal could be worse nine times out of ten sometimes it's mostly worse than the bullying we endured when we was a child uh, we we dealt with verbal too but at the same time because they have social media and they have internet they deal with a lot more of bullying than we think and it's a lot of uh teenagers between the ages of 12 to 14 that are committing suicide at a rapid rate right now in the year of 2022 because of everything that we just dealt with with the pandemic, them feeling depressed, getting bullied. There's a lot of things. So I want to uh, talk about how do you think that you dealt with um, the pandemic in itself, meaning trying to be at home from school. Um, mentally, how do you think you dealing with it or dealt with it and now that you out of it, because we're basically out of it, um, how do you think your mental health, what's, what's important about your mental health as a teenager that you want people to know? Based on the last thing you said, um, how do I take, like, um, learning at home mentally? Um, it's not that much in, like, virtual learning. It was kind of like... So a bland fade, but I I helped I did like a lot of work, and it was it was really it was kind kind of easy, easier for me, and really I never interact interacted with people, so I never had like any any situations where there was no like attention and stuff and like physical situations with other people, but it it was good based on the mental health thing. I think, uh, well, I'm back in, back in sixth grade, um, I had a lot of bullying issues, 
moving into a new school after my elementary school, I was in a private school from, from, uh, it was a private school. So like every, every year it it wasn't like a new person. It wasn't that much people there. So every year you know, you knew the same people that was there. So it was like kindergarten to eighth grade, I think. I I dropped out of there in fifth grade to move to new school in sixth grade. Sixth grade was eh, it's like six out of ten. Um, uh, yeah, I did have a lot of bullying issues. Come uh, meeting new people. Uh, there was a lot of kids there, definitely. Um, they 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 rules were different most of the time. And sometimes it just confused me because, like, I was, I was, it was awkward for me that that way. But I didn't really have a lot of friends in sixth grade. But I did, I did. Uh, my behavior was pretty pretty good in sixth grade as it was. Few people liked me. Uh, some people disliked me. May, many, maybe. But that's why I think. I think the school was fun to afford the activities and stuff, but it it was it was fine after all. After sixth grade, uh, virtual learning wasn't wasn't uh, as intense as sixth grade, but eighth grade I can I can say it was it was rough, but not as rough as sixth grade because but it was a lot to handle because I was. Whatever in eighth grade, I was prepared for from sixth grade. Um, they, I didn't really get bullied a lot, but I was, I wasn't a popular kid, but I was like known by everybody that was in there. Uh, more like class clown, uh, the sh- street walker, or what's a street walker? It's like some, it's like something, um. When when people see often see you a lot, it's like it's like um I have a lot of people in school where I don't even know the name of they know my name, but I don't okay. even know I don't even know the name of like I have a I had like five kids that come up to me that knew my name I just didn't I didn't know them that that's how known I was yeah bullying was less of a problem. Because everybody was cool, cool with me. Thought it was cool. Some people disagreed, but many thought, many thought, it was a good, good person. I would say my grades and issues were. Um, it was it was okay. I was doing I was doing good in school. Uh, I didn't really do good at math until I got a tutor, but it, it really worked worked out for me. What do you think mentally are you, uh, how mentally prepared are you for high school? I don't think nobody is actually prepared for anything. Like, you know, it's just like going, getting married. Uh, you might not be mentally prepared for marriage, but you have to step into it. So how do mentally you think you're prepared for high school right now? Uh, if you want to say on a scale of one to 10, I'll just say it like that. Mentally, where do you think you at and why? High school is will be unexpected. I don't know I don't know what it's gonna be like, but um I don't know. Am I mentally prepared for it? I I guess I can I guess I can ha- handle it. Um some of my some of my school years from third, sixth, third third to sixth grade it was it wasn't as good but uh i think i can get mentally prepared for it yeah it depends on there's a lot of people i meet um i encounter a lot of a lot of different people with different attitudes of course um some are rude some are uh nice there's so much just like quiet but yeah. So yeah. on a scale of one to ten, how mentally prepared are you? Ten being, I got this. I'm gonna work this out. One being, 
I'm so lost that I wish we was doing virtual learning again. I would say a little bit like seven. Seven is a good answer. I mean, seven is okay. I got a look. I got most of my confidence, but you know, I don't know what to expect. And I think seven is actually a perfect answer. It's probably an average answer for people. I don't think anybody is going to go in there saying, "Oh, this is 10. unless you've been in high school before and you're just starting all over or whatever. Um, they they saying that it's a ten. I don't think nobody's going to say it's a ten because. It's a new experience. You're never prepared for anything new. Um, like I said, with marriage, you can be prepared as much as you say you're going to be. But at the same time, every day is different. And so when you're going to a new high school and a new school, of course, it's going to be different. Just like you talked about the experiences and the differences of being in a private school from being in a public school, because that's what sixth grade was. It was public school and it was like a culture shock, if you want to call it. Meaning I went into this intermediate class and I was from this uh, small classroom setting. I knew everybody from kindergarten to fifth grade. Then I go to sixth grade and this this big world I never seen and knew about. I'm meeting different people, different cultures, different attitudes. I'm not even realizing, you know, I'm still trying to figure out who I am as a young man. I'm in sixth grade and I'm in a different state and I'm in a different school. Uh, because when he moved, when we moved, so we live in Wisconsin right now. When we moved, we he went to a public school um, um, until we, well, when, once we moved. Uh, so that's why we switched schools because we was in Illinois at first. But anyway, um, so I think me personally, as your mother, I think you're mentally prepared. Uh, I think nobody's gonna be fully prepared. I also think that you you. You have the initial confidence that you need to have. You just have to believe in yourself more. Because as we know, all my listeners probably know, going into high school was so scary. Because you like you knew that it was more, I had to be independent. I had to be uh, more like the teacher's not going to be on me no more. I got to get my work done. They give you the syllabus for the whole month. You're like, oh, this is a lot of work. Or whatever. And then sometimes you might think, okay, I got time. And then you find out you don't have time. Uh, But the whole experience of high school is different. But once you, I feel like in the first three months, once you get used to it, after that first quarter, you're going to be like, oh, okay, I got this. Because it's a repetitive nature. It's not going to be nothing that's different. Then when you go to sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, that's when you're going to be like, okay. I think it gets more... You go back into nervousness when you get into your senior year because your senior year is the last year. It's like, oh, okay, I'm 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 about to be adult. I gotta go into adulthood. Um, my senior year, I gotta go off to college. Now I gotta think what colleges I want to. You gotta take the ACT, the SATs. Your senior year, so I think senior year is when you go with this whole nervousness like freshman year again. Like, I don't know what to expect because um, it's a little more calmer, but at the same time, and then it starts all over when you go into college. It's like, oh, God, okay, I'm a freshman all over again. Now we're going back into freshman year when you're in college. And then it's the same thing. But honestly, if my listeners was truthfully honest, that happens every time we try something new. It's not just college. It's just not high school. It's just not. It's life period. When you start driving, you're going to have that same nervousness. When you start for your first time driving, then when you go from practice driving, you're going to have that same nervousness when you start getting your your license. Then you're going to have that same nervousness when you buy when you sign up for your first apartment. Then you're going to have that same nervousness. It all recycles itself every time it's a new experience. But what you got to remember and you're going to remember is you did it and you processed it and you accomplished it. Okay. And we got to move on to the next. Every time I do this podcast is a new nervousness, especially the way I'm rerouting this podcast. And I was explaining to my son, God told me I have to do some things more that's going to make me uncomfortable. A lot of things that I'm changing for my business is going to make me uncomfortable. It's going to only make me uncomfortable because it's called growth. Only thing that's going to make you uncomfortable is why you growing. Um, if it doesn't make you uncomfortable, you're not growing. That's just the truth. If you're not uncomfortable with doing homework, if you're not uncomfortable with doing 
something that you never did before, don't know some, it's, you're not going to grow. Uh, because that means you're going to stay stuck in who you are, the person you are, or the situation that you're in. And you're going to see yourself five, 10 years down the line doing nothing with your life. So anything that's required for growth, if I would say the breakthrough for today is you have to step out to be uncomfortable. The uncomfortableness comes with nervousness. It's going to come with fear. It's going to come with uncertainty. But once you do it, then you're going to figure out, oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And then you're going to be happy that you got uncomfortable. Because anytime that you're comfortable, that means that you are stuck. If it comes too easy, and that's with relationships, friendships, partnerships, high school, college, buying a house, buying a car, anything that you do that's new and it makes you uncomfortable. It's just a new phase and a new period. Well, that is the end of this podcast. I thank you, my son, my baby. Y'all know that CJ is like, we, we call him CJ, but his name's Corey, but his family name is CJ. Um, that's my heart because the way he is, he's just a really a sweetheart or whatever. He's very quiet, very subtle. He's my introvert. My daughter's my extrovert. One day she probably be on mommy podcast because she is the, the flower that blooms in the room. So, <laughs> But we're going to see you guys next week and I'm happy to be back and I hope you enjoyed this podcast today and thank you for joining the Breakthrough Podcast. See you next week, guys. Thank you for listening to the Breakthrough Podcast. To learn more about Reba House, please visit Instagram and Facebook at The Breakthrough Coach Online and also YouTube.com at The Breakthrough Podcast. You can also visit www.rebabell.com for breakthrough coaching or merchandise. Also, please visit and join the Facebook community support at facebook.com slash domestic survivors only. Tune in next time for another episode of the Breakthrough Podcast with Reba Hobbs. Thank you for joining us.